the uh, actually the, the, the original Land Rover was designed basically as an agricultural vehicle. It, uh, the, the original one actually had a centre steering, and it had a seat on either side. Um, but uh, since then, it's it's kind of evolved from a farmer's vehicle. Um, the the early ones used to actually have um, implement attachments. You could get three point linkages like a tractor, and you could actually plough a field with a Land Rover if you wanted to. Wow. Since then, it, it kind of went from a farmer's vehicle. Uh, the Range Rover came along, which was maybe for the wealthy farmer. Well, I think the thing about a Land Rover is it's not necessarily a pretty vehicle. It's a vehicle that you should use. As we will see today, it's something that water can get into and just drains right up. So you run the Toronto Rover Area Club? What yes, I'm, I'm, I'm the president uh, at the present of the, of the Toronto Area Rover Club. It's a group of Rover owners from around the Toronto area. And, and we get together and, and do outings like this. Uh, we have month monthly meetings. It's probably a good idea to, if someone wants to go off-roading, not to do it on their own, no. especially the first time. It's better to have at least two vehicles so they can help. Uh, actually, you really, you should never really go yeah. out in the bush on your own. Um, and that's the same whether it's a 4x4 four four or a quad or a dirt bike. That's about camping, too. Exactly. <laughs> you should go out by yourself. Yeah. No, you, you don't want to be out there. If something happens, you're going to have somebody there and some backup. Yeah. And, um, and that's what's nice about, about the clubs, is you, uh, you, know, you can join a, join a club. There, there's always somebody that, that's going out that's wanting to go with you. We go in a little, little group. If somebody has a problem, we can usually get them back on the road. So, Simon, w what kind of vehicle are you, you driving? This is a 20-year-old uh, Land Rover. Um, this really is um, a true original Land Rover in the sense of uh, it's not, it wasn't built as an SUV. This is way before the time of SUVs. Yeah. This is basically a farm tractor. Uh -huh. um, it, the technology hasn't tra changed on this thing for about 50 years. It's used all across the world um, as uh, like an emergency service vehicle, construction vehicle, um, anything that involves heavy work, off-road, tough, tough, durable. Now, you just went through the swamp here. What was the thrill? Tell me about it. Why did you do it? Because everybody else did. <laughs> no, it's, you know, part of the fun is actually getting stuck sometimes, because sometimes it can be a little bit too... Um, you, take, you take these trails for granted, because the Land Rovers are fine, they're so capable that it gets too easy sometimes. I know that sounds like, you know, arrogant Land Rover user to, uh, owner type thing, <laughs> but it's, it's true. I mean, uh, so sometimes we do those little crazy things to um, just have a little bit of fun and a bit more challenge. How much of what you do is skill, and how much of it is guts? Um, that's a good question. Actually, a lot, a lot of it, um, when you get into the trickier terrain, like these obstacles, you need to have a level of skill. Um, otherwise, you're going to damage your vehicle and you're going to get left stranded. Um, the biggest thing is knowing to, how to control the speed of your vehicle. That's the most important thing with off-roading. Um, if you go too fast, you lose control, you have an accident, you damage the vehicle. So as slow as possible, as fast as necessary type of approach. Really. I quickly learned that you have to leave any fears of scratching the paint job back home with the family sedan. Now, Len, I think the surprising thing is that you're the only one that brought your kids today. Absolutely. <laughs> This is a family fair for you? Oh, well, this is the only way I can get out of the house, actually, right? Oh, I see. The, <laughs> part of the deal. Part of so. it. Take the kids or else you don't go. <laughs> now, you're a nut when it comes to off-roading. Yeah, well, I'm not a nut. I just really enjoy it. Yeah. Now, what kind of vehicle is this? This is a Land Rover 110. It's badged now as a Defender, but officially a 110. And how old is this one? It's an 83. It's not really designed for absolute comfort, this particular oh, one no. here. No, no, no. This Quite is so utilitarian. Basic, but yeah. Yeah, very utilitarian. What do you think the three most important things are to remember when you are attempting to go off-road? Off oh, uh, always go with someone else so you're not the only vehicle. Um, make sure you have recovery gear and make sure someone knows where you're going. What's recovery gear? Something to pull you out. So uh, recovery straps, recovery points on the vehicle that can take the load for pulling out of mud, pulling out of water. Uh, just something in the event that you do get stuck, because eventually you do, and it helps you get out. I think patience, not only the fact that you have your kids with you, but patience is a big part of this off-roading experience, don't you? There, are, We do spend a lot of time driving slow, and uh, yeah, I guess patience. Because uh, it's, it's not about speed, is it? Oh, no. What's the advantage of uh, being a member of a club, of this club? Well, I think just getting out with, uh, you know, the camaraderie that you have, yeah. and... Uh, uh, you know, it's a little bit of a spectator sport as well, watching, uh, you know, 
other guys get stuck. <laughs> it's about that, and it's, you know, just making sure that you're getting outdoors with people that uh, are there to pull you out when you need them. Hey, Len, do you think we can do it? Sure, yeah, we can do this. You sure? Oh, yeah, yeah, we can do it. Well, it's your, it's your vehicle. <laughs> Not quite your suburban outing, is it? There seems to be an unspoken rule shared by all of these guys. If you come upon a body of water, or anything for that matter, and you can go around it, don't. Go through it. Or over it. You're gonna go through it? Yeah. Why are you gonna go through it? Because it's there. <laughs> Because it's there. Why Guys are nuts. <laughs> wait, wait a minute. Tell me about this. Does the water get in here? Sure. Yeah. It it drains but, well. Oh, it drains well. Is it? It's not sealed. No. If you, if you seal it and you go through deep water, the vehicle will float away. So the idea is to actually let water in and out again. Oh. So that actually holds the vehicle down. If you're crossing a river, that holds it down, holds it stable. Oh my God. <laughs> did it. Okay, who's next? There we go, she's gonna keep it now, right there. Huh? Woo! <laughs> she left the window open. <laughs> Time for a car wash. Window was open about that much. <laughs> Land Rover without my tires doing that. Yeah. <laughs> we've gone today? Oh, probably uh, about six kilometers right now. Six kilometers, that's all? I feel like I've been going for a hundred, a hundred at least. Oh, around four hours. At the end of the day, even though Simon got stuck and had to be pulled out by the rest of us, and Lend ended up with a flat tire, I was informed that our tour suffered relatively few mishaps compared to other adventures. Only two nuts. Or three nuts. If you go off-roading, don't go alone, and don't forget the spare tire. This is Vince Grittani, the weekend guy, reminding you to live your life like it's one long weekend. Now, how long are we going to be? I think we're... Did anybody bring anything to eat here? Mm.